Real footage can be boring. Why not add cool animations to it and make your video come to life? Hey guys, this is Ina and welcome to Cashew Academy. Today I will show you how to add animations to real footage and say goodbye to long and boring videos. I posted this reel on my Instagram last month and a lot of you asked me to create a tutorial on this topic. So here we go. Today we will be creating this section of the animation and I'll walk you through everything. So first let's open up the footage. This is the footage that we'll be using. And then we will be creating a new solid layer. You can do that by clicking Ctrl Y on your keyboard and then click OK. So now we are going to be creating a mask. So I'm going to speed this up. Here is our mask. We'll need to animate the mask path because our actor is moving. So we'll need to, to trace that. Currently, the movement of my mask is not so smooth, it's not perfect, but I'll be adjusting it later on. Go in your effects panel and search for scribble and apply the effect on the mask. So this will give us this very cool scribble effect inside the mask. We are going to just change the color. This scribble effect is actually animated, so you don't have to do anything else. We are just going to adjust the mask feather. I'm just going to make it 25. And now we're going to animate these thunders. We'll be creating a new composition by clicking Ctrl N. We'll be using a square format for this. And I'm going to click on the pen tool and then I'm going to create a thunder icon. Then I'll just change the color of it and I'm going to paste it in my master composition. I am going to move it here and I'm going to adjust the anchor point by clicking U on the keyboard and then dragging it. So now click S on your keyboard to bring up scale and P to bring up position and add keyframes for these two. I'm going to select the scale keyframe and I'm, I'm going to move it. And at the start of the composition, I'll make the scale zero. And for the position, I'm going to make sure it starts here. And then by this time, it goes up like this. Actually, let me change the scale. I think it's too big. So let me make the second keyframe. 60 instead of 100. So let's play that. Okay, it looks pretty good. So now I'm going to select position and I'm going to open the graph editor. I'll separate the X and U dimensions and I'm going to play around with these settings. I'm going to make the keyframes faster and this is how it looks now. I think it looks pretty good. So I'm going to move forward and click on the layer and click Ctrl D to duplicate it. And then I'm going to open up my keyframes the X and Y position keyframes, and I'm going to move the position. So the animation is the other way around uh, on the other side of the, uh, the girl. And I'm going to offset that. So let's see how that looks. So go in your effects panel and search for drop shadow and apply it. Change the distance and copy and paste the effect to the other thunder layer. It is looking good, but I need to adjust the color. So I'm going just to make it a darker purple. So we are ready with this part. So now we will be animating this monster character. I already have it here. So if we play our original animation, this is what he does. And we're going to be recreating that. The first thing is to rename the layers as always. And then we are going to parent them. So the horns need to be parented to the body, pew pew to the eye and that, and then the eye to the body. We're going to be creating a very simple animation. We won't be creating a full rig of this character or moving the arms or legs. Now I am going to add keyframes for position and scale. So position, scale and rotation for the body, for the eye, position and scale, pew pew position, and then the horns position only. I'm going to click F9 to easy ease them. And now let me select these keyframes and move them around so that will be actually our final position and now we'll need to create the first position so the body needs to go down the eye will go down as well the horns will go up so we can create this cool uh parallax motion the preview will go down as well and actually let me just make these keyframes faster so that will be that will be my middle position so we'll be creating this little bounce so he'll be going up and down a little bit so my middle keyframes will be when he's going up and then the final keyframes will be when he goes down like this. And play around with, with these keyframes and the timing. 
Now I'm going to select the body and I'm going to open the graph editor and I'm going to make some adjustments to the graph like this. And then I'm going to add keyframes for the other body parts. So for the eye, I'll make sure it goes up. When the character goes up, the horns go down. And then on the final keyframe, the horns go back to normal. And then the eye is at the center. So now uh, the pupil as well. So here it needs to go up. So as you can see, the pupil goes outside of the eye. So we'll need to mask it. Just duplicate the eye, remove all the keyframes that the eye has and parent it to the eye. So that way you don't have to create a bunch of keyframes and copy paste them. Uh, when you parent it, everything that the main eye does, the mask eye will do as well. So yes, so parent it, bring it up and then make sure you click on alpha mate of the pupil. So it's masked inside the eye. Let's just play that. Okay, looks good. Uh, so now let's just make him blink. I'm going to animate the scale. I won't be creating another eye. I'll be just animating the scale of the eye like this. So let me play that. Okay, looks pretty good. So now we'll just need to add other keyframes. So he will appear and then he will turn around to, uh, to look at the uh, actor. Just create keyframes for everything and then rotate the body adjust the horns and the pupil as well it needs to look that way okay good okay yeah looks pretty good we can adjust the pupil but we can do that later let's make him blink here as well and we're ready with the monster so we are going to just add it in our master composition here we'll need to adjust him so let me rotate them scale him down and now let's mask him We'll duplicate the mask that we created for the scribble and we're going to rename that. So for the mask, we are going to click M to bring up mask and invert it. Then we're going to bring it up above the monster and we're going to make the feather zero, the mask feather zero and the monster just make sure it's alpha inverted. Let's adjust the anchor point to make it at the center of the monster. Rotate him a little bit. And now let's add some keyframes. So we already have the animation of the monster, but we'll like to add a few additional keyframes to make it more realistic. So at the start, we'll move him down. And then right here, we'll make him go here. So we are just adjusting the position basically. And then at around this time, he will move back here. Yeah. And then at the end, he will move a little again like this. So the thing is that the actor is moving, so it won't make sense for the monster to just be static. So that's why we are moving the monster as well to add some realism to it. So now I'm just going to copy and paste the piles that I have created and I'm going to adjust the position of them. So make sure they fit. Then you rename them, uh, pow pow, and then we are going to parent them to our monster character so they move with the character. Now we will need to adjust the position. So add keyframes for the position for both of these layers. In the middle of his appearance, they need to go up and then at the start, they need to go to be down. So this is how they look and this is good. Uh, let's offset them. Okay, awesome. And now let's duplicate the mask that we have for our monster character, uh, bring it above the paw and then make sure we click on alpha inverted. Um, and then here at the center, this is where the, the paws go up. Uh, we'll click Control, Shift and D to duplicate and cut. And we're going to delete the duplicate layer. We're going to duplicate it again and bring it above the other paw like this. Uh, let me just move the, the, the monster a little bit. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Looks pretty good. So now let's create the other monster. This is the other monster that I have and I have already renamed all my layers so it's easier. And now we're just going to parent them. So the mouth is parented to the head, the pupil to the eye, the other pupil to the eye, the eyes to the head, the horns to the head and the head will be our main layer. And now let's add some keyframes. I have position keyframes for almost everything. The head has position keyframes, scale keyframes and rotation keyframes as well. So that will be our final keyframe. Um, let's create our first keyframe. He needs to go down here in the middle. He'll go up and I'm just going to change the scale a bit. I can have this cool bounce effect at the start. Let me just go back and adjust the scale. The scale needs to be the same as the scale at the, at the end. 
And then in between these two, I'm going to copy and paste the final keyframes and make him go down a bit. And now we are going to open up the graph editor, uh, separate the X from Y positions and adjust the graph to, to have a smooth motion of the head. So let's see how that looks. Okay, awesome. Yeah, looks pretty good. So now let's start adding keyframes for everything else. So the horns uh, need to go up at this stage. The eyes and the mouth will go down. Then in the second keyframe, when he goes up, the eyes will go up as well and the horns will go down. Okay, the third keyframe where he looks down again, I'm just going to make him look kind of normal, just a bit down maybe. And then here, go up again and adjust the horns too. So let's see how that looks. Okay, awesome. Great. So now let's make him blink again. I'm going to animate the scale of the eye, make sure it's 100 and then 5 here. And then I'm going to duplicate this layer and then like 2-3 frames in, uh, make the keyframe 100 as well. And make sure you have uh, this the uh, disproportionate scale option clicked. And now I'm going to just copy and paste. And then a few frames after, I'm going to duplicate all the frames and uh, create new keyframes when he looks at the actor again. Um, so let's adjust his eye position and mouth as well. Yeah, I forgot to add keyframes, so let me do that now. And I'm going to select the eyes and the mouth and move them around here. Then the horns to the right. And then the pupils will move faster here. So at this stage, just make him look left. Okay, awesome. And let's just make him blink once again here. Okay, great. I am pasting the monster we just created in our master composition and I'm going to adjust him. I'm going to duplicate the mask again and bring it above the character and make sure it's alpha inverted. And now I'm going to animate the position once again, same as we did with the other monster. Uh, so just play around with it. I'm going to select the, the paws, um, duplicate them by clicking Ctrl G, and I'm going to remove the position keyframes. I'm going to bring them up here and I'm going to adjust them to fit our second monster character. And I'm going to change the color to blue because our monster is blue. And I'm going to copy this and paste it to their paw. Let me just adjust them a little bit. And I'm going to select both of these layers and I'm going to parent them to the, the master monster character. Uh, and let's animate the position. Uh, so P on the keyboard to bring up position. And then at this stage, they will go up. Yep. And then at this stage, they will be down. That will be behind her, then up, and then we'll see the pause. So we are going to basically do the exact same thing. Let me just adjust these keyframes a little bit, because uh, that's faster. Okay. And then I am going to duplicate the mask, bring it above, make sure it's alpha inverted. And then here, uh, when the paws are up, I'm going to click Control Shift and D to cut and duplicate, delete the duplicate layer, uh, and then duplicate it again, bring it here. Uh, and yeah, and I'm just going to just this position because it doesn't look really natural. So like this. And let's see. Okay, awesome. Well, that looks pretty good to me. Let me just offset the second monster. And now we are going to be adding the stars. So I'm just going to copy and paste my star uh, from like the original star that I, that I created. And I'm going to apply the drop shadow, same as before. I'm going to adjust the distance and the color. And now for this animation, I'm going to uh, animate the scale. So create a scale keyframe, make it 100, and then a few frames before make it zero. Okay, so this is how it looks. And now I'm going to use the Animation Composer tree for the sake of time and I want to be creating this uh, cool kind of floating floating effect of the star. So uh, if you don't have it, it's free, you can download it and the link will be in the description. So uh, once you install it, you see this panel and then if you go to Effects, to the Layer Effects and then the first folder and then you can click on this one over here. 
just make sure you have you click on the layer and then click on the effect and then click apply you see a few effects added in your effects panel make sure you change the intensity to about 20. so let's see how that looks okay awesome we are ready with the star let me duplicate it by clicking ctrl d and i'm going to just flip it and i'm going to make sure this second duplicate layer has an intensity of minus 15 so it moves the other way around so now we will be creating these splash animations and the best way to do that is to make them frame by frame and i know that can be exhausting so here's my process i search on youtube splash green screen and then there are a bunch of videos that you can check and you can download. This is for reference. Uh, here's mine. So I'm just going to, um, to paste it in my composition and I'm going to start creating a frame by frame animation. So uh, yeah, I'm going to speed this up and here is my splash. It's already ready. So to, I'm just going to scale it down, adjust it in the composition and I'm going to mask it again. So I'm just using the same mask. I'm going to make sure it's self inverted and then I'm going to search for the fill effect and I'm going to change the color to this yellow. And here we go. So now I'm just going to bring this down below the monster and I am going to duplicate it. I'm going to remove the mask, offset it like this. I'm just going to flip it and change the color of it. So that was actually the final step and this is how our animation looks. Just a quick reminder that my free project files are in the description below if you want to download and practice these techniques. Mm -hmm.